There's no doubt that electric vehicles are slick. And they're not only seen as eco-friendly, they're fast. Oh yeah, I can feel that. And fun. Now this isn't the top performance model, by the way, but that was 60. Drive smooth, the performance, I mean, there's really nothing bad about it, if I'm honest. But are they practical? Can Americans really go without stopping at the gas station? I'll share this. Yeah. As an owner of a Tesla, when you're on US 17, go and towards Green Cove Spring, there's a lack of chargers there. Is there enough infrastructure to support these green efforts? Houston, we have a problem. And can drivers really save money in the long run? Or are these reserved for the wealthy? Juicing up. Everybody can't afford to put that in their house. And this right here is it's inconvenient. I don't, well, I don't really know how, how long it takes. If you can fill up like getting gas, then OK. But if you got to sit here for a couple of hours, that's stupid. We are finding out in an electric vehicle voyage. Oh, well, hey, congratulations, Vic, on the new car here. We're at a Jacksonville dealership, Tom Bush. They've agreed to let us test drive an EV for a few days. All right, All right so to start the, the car, rest. you put your foot in the brake there. All right. And now to get it into drive, just twist mm -hmm. it upwards. Look at the wrist. And you see how it lights up yellow? Yeah. So that's your drive mode there. This is Volkswagen's ID4. It's an SUV that starts around $41,000. It's one of more than 40 types of electric vehicles on the market in the U.S. right now, with just about every major car maker dipping into the market. Although there is a learning curve for those leaving the gas-powered world, it did not take long for us to be on the road for an emissions-free weekend. The range is said to be around 300 miles, and I wanted to test every mile of that. Good to hey, meet Bill. you. Good to see you. While we're out for this drive, let's connect with Bill Bortsfield. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of EV Rider. He's a lifelong journalist who now blogs about EVs. He has two electric cars and a battery-powered motorcycle. All right. Today, he's taking us for a cruise in his Ford Mustang Mach-E. And why? Why are you interested in electric? Well, back when I was uh, working at the Florida Times Union, I was out doing a story on uh, the Tesla Supercharger when it opened in St. Augustine. Mm -hmm and they let me take a Model S P85 on the back roads. And I had driven things like, you know, Porsches, Vipers, Ford GTs, but I never felt anything kick me in the pants like that Tesla. Yeah. And I couldn't afford to run out and buy a, a Model S, but I could afford to get a Zero motorcycle. And then no turning back. No turning back. Um, we are pretty much an all EV family, although I have a second bike, which is gasoline, but our two cars and the motorcycle are electric. Does that keep you grounded or do you still get to travel? Oh gosh, no. Uh, well, let's see. Right now I've got 23,900 miles on this. Last week we got back from Deals Gap, North Carolina. All we right. towed the Zero up with this car and then we rode the uh, Zero around uh, North Carolina and Tennessee. You're driving all these places? All these places in the Mach-E, yep. What do you have to do to plan ahead? Is it different than just saying, oh, there's a gas station? Well, it's actually really easy. Um, all you do, you punch in your destination. So what I'll do, I'll usually go ahead and put in a trip in the app. So for example, there is uh, the trip we took to Deals Gap. And what it'll do, it'll plot out the route, and it'll tell me it's gonna add the chargers to the route. And I can either just trust it, or <laughs> I can go ahead and back check it. I personally prefer to back check it, but as you can see, it thinks I would have two charges that would take a total of 55 minutes uh, for a trip of 388 miles. So that's a glorified lunch stop. Yeah, and that's exactly what we do. Is there enough infrastructure across the U.S., no matter where you go, to no. take an electric vehicle? I don't think so. Um, you know, I mean, like when I was out in New Mexico and Kansas and things, I mean, I was very careful to plot what I did. But I'll give you an example where things aren't where they need to be yet. I was coming back on Route 66, and uh, my original plan was to more or less take that down to Houston. But in the end, I actually detoured over to the interstate and through Oklahoma City, which added probably close to 100 miles because there were no DC fast chargers 
on the route that I would have naturally taken. Okay. And it's not like, oh, this gas station's not up to par. We're going to go down the road and hit that one. Well, it depends. You know, for example, if you were stuck here in Jacksonville, you'd be okay. In the city, right. you'd be okay. I mean, you know, uh, especially me as a Ford owner, starting next year, I will have full access to superchargers. So, like, up the street here is the Wawa. Down the street is the Electrify America. You got EVgo. You know, if you're pretty much going up and down the Northeast Corridor on I-95, you're not going to have any problems. But when you go out into the rural areas, uh, that's where it's more likely to get dicey. Dicey is right. On my test drive, I learned the hard way that many EV chargers are level one or level two, not superchargers. I thought I could still get a decent boost at many of these pay-per-use stopovers, but I was quickly disappointed. I now call them trickle chargers because they gave me only four to five miles per hour of charge, meaning a full battery could take days. It says it'll be done Sunday. It's Friday. And I don't think anyone's got time for that. That is where superchargers come in. But my first one was a bust. This charger in Jacksonville Beach showed up on the GPS, but when I got there, it was out of order, even rusting, leaving me to find another trickle charger and literally leaving my car overnight just to get enough miles for the next day. Which is why so many people have range anxiety. The White House says right now there's about 130,000 electric vehicle charging stations nationwide. The goal by 2030 is for half a million. A bipartisan infrastructure law will help with that, earmarking $7.5 billion for a network of charging stations. Additionally, automakers are making big investments. They know they'll sell more electric vehicles if people have less range anxiety. Tesla has long had the most superchargers across the U.S., but other companies are catching up and sharing resources. Brian Bush is VP of several dealerships in Jacksonville, which sell EV BMWs, Volkswagens, Mazdas, and Minis. Is it sustainable? Is it safe to drive an EV across the U.S. nowadays? Is there enough infrastructure? You know, it's getting better. The range is getting better. The prices are getting cheaper. So kind of the benchmark for EVs, I think, is around 300 miles and around 40 grand or less. And so a lot of the brands have achieved that. The tax credit has helped. Um, and the infrastructure gets better every day. What do we need to do with infrastructure to get to a place where everybody can drive it comfortably and never have to worry about not having a charger, not making it to their destination? Right. You know, it's a group effort. I think uh, you see the, the, the need for the infrastructure and the incentives are there. JA has a local rebate for commercial businesses to install them. So it's a no brainer. If you want your EV customers to spend more time in your facility, you want to put a charger in and you'll get them to hopefully spend more money in your establishment. How far away are we, Brian, do you think from being totally self-sustaining electric vehicles all over. That's a tough question. Uh, you know, the manufacturers there, they're all preparing for it. A lot of them are going all EV. They're making declarations 2030, 2035. Um, but we know it's going to be a transition. And we saw that forward looking in action at this autonomous vehicle summit. Self-driving cars, city buses and motorcycles all run by battery. Companies are investing big money, hoping it pays off. And while my test drive started off, let's just say, on a rocky road, it did get better. Here we are. It's almost 2 a.m. But this appears to be one of the fastest chargers in our area. I learned how to find fast chargers, which cost me about $14 per stop. Can we get an alleluia? Because if you've been following along, the last one was five miles per hour. Yes, it gave you five miles of juice per hour. This one is five miles per minute. EV blogger Bill Bortsfield found his rhythm years ago by installing chargers in his garage. It cost him a few hundred dollars and a visit from the electrician, but he says they're well worth it. So we have no trouble keeping all three charged. And your electric bill's not? crazy high. You got to keep in mind how fuel efficient these things are. So for example, the Mini is rated at the equivalent of about 110 miles per gallon. The Zero is in the city rated at the equivalent of 435 miles per gallon. That drops in about half if you're on the interstate. And the Mach-E is rated at around 85. So I mean, you got to keep in mind 
they're a lot more efficient in terms of energy units burned than gasoline. So for now, the limitations are finding superchargers, higher prices than comparable combustible engines, and range for long-term trips. But the future for this quickly evolving technology is bright. There is a lot to discuss here, and we'd like to hear your opinions. Drop a comment below and make sure you hit subscribe to stay up to date with Solutionaries.